Hi everyone and welcome to downtown Phoenix, Arizona. I'm Rob Blackman, this is Bobby Riddell, this is Chris Foreman, and this is a special edition of the Boiler Ball pregame show. Yes, I know it's not exactly pregame time quite yet with Purdue playing North Carolina State on Saturday in the Final Four. And yes, I understand it's Wednesday, but hey, when you haven't been to the Final Four since 1980, we figure we might need to do a few of these pregame shows. So that's what we're going to do for you. We'll be doing daily shows uh, leading right up into that uh, national semifinal matchup Saturday uh, right here. And uh, we invite you to follow us on social media uh, to please just kind of, uh, you know, check those, uh, check those social media outlets daily and, and figure out what we'll be doing our show uh, to talk about Purdue basketball. With that said, welcome to downtown Phoenix. Bob Riddell. You were part of this from day one, a walk-on freshman, Coach Painter's first year as the head coach at Purdue, a season in which you only won nine games, partner. Little did you know, though, that that would be that first baby step towards where we are today. Congratulations. Well, thank you, Rob. It's pretty wild. That was your, you know, your first year on the broadcast team as well. So you and I both go back to the beginning and uh, pretty special to see how far this program has come since that point. Obviously, that was uh, you know a tough time for Purdue. You know, definitely a rebuilding period going from Coach Katie to Coach Painter. It was a lot of moving parts back then. But uh, obviously, I was very fortunate to be able to play on Coach Painter's first team and now be able to have this uh, firsthand observation of, of his career and where he's taken it to this point. And so, yeah, it was very fun to you know be courtside with you and see Coach Painter finally you know uh, get that you know, magical day in the sun to to make the Final Four. Well, Chris Foreman, uh, you haven't been around quite as long as Bob Riddell, though you could rival him in some ways. For those who don't know, it wasn't a great start for Chris Foreman either. When mm. he first came to Purdue as our sports information director, how many games did we win that year? Uh, we, we, well, that was the year we finished last in the Big Ten. Dead last. So okay, my first yeah. year here was the year we finished last. So last year, your first year, last for us, our first year. Yeah. Yeah. Look at us now. We didn't have, yeah. we didn't have great <laughs> starts with this yeah. thing, guys. Uh, but yeah, hey, man. I'm sure you, and you and I have joked about this before. Yep. After that first season with the Purdue basketball, you have said publicly, I was wondering what I saw, I yeah. got myself into. I think you turned out okay. Yeah, well, I came from the Naval Academy, and the year before I got at Purdue, we went 3-26 and 26 <laughs> and lost 22 games in a row to end the season under a first-year head coach who's really done a great job out there, too, as well. So, um, and then I got here, and, you know, we went 15-17 and 17 or whatever it was, finished last in Big Ten, lost – seven in a row to end the year and I was just like man what am I you know my <laughs> wife wasn't very happy here being in the Midwest and yeah. she's an East Coast girl so it was it was a really hard first year but man, after that first year and then you know you go into the the next year in 15, 14 15 and we started off eight and five mm -hmm. with like losses to Gardner Webb right. and North Florida and and I remember Coach Painter in the in you know locker room after the game he's like after the Gardner Webb game and he was you know, he was fearing for things, yeah, you know, for, sure. for himself. So um, just what they've done in the Big Ten after that and after that moment, after Christmas in 2014, mm -hmm. it's been it's been a really, really good ride. And um, it's just great to see, you know, Matt and um, the entire university get to this point and finally break through after 44 years. Uh, by the way, we will talk later in the week specifics about North Carolina State and that matchup Saturday night. But these first couple days of the week, we'd like to spend a few more minutes just really reflecting on the journey to the Final Four. Bob, I'm, I'm just sure you have to be over the moon for Coach Painter. I mean, the guy gives you a chance as a true walk-on. Now, eventually, he'll, he was awarded a scholarship, by the way, fans. Uh, but gave you an opportunity as a walk-on and... Uh, I guess the, uh, your way to help repay him is uh, we, we say some nice things about him on the radio. Although right now it's really easy to say nice things about Coach Painter in this program. Well, no question. I'll you know, be forever grateful to, to Coach Painter for what he did for me and, and giving me that chance uh, as a true freshman. You know, they, now they have a lot of the more of the preferred walk-on kind of situations. You know, back then it, it was the kind of traditional walk-on. I went to a 6 a.m. tryout with you know, 30, 40 other guys who were hoping to, to have the opportunity that I ended up getting. Um, Fortunately, as a Lafayette kid, I was able to get some open gyms in the summer and kind of uh, butter up some of the players <laughs> on the team and, and get to know them, which I think uh, helped my case. But, you know, he didn't have to give me that opportunity. And when, I, when he came in and told me I was going to be on the team, I always will never forget, you know, he tells me like, hey, man, you're on the team now. Like, this isn't in some charity thing. Like, we expect you to compete, uh, go after guys in practice. Like, you're on the team just like anyone else. And so for him to give me that chance and then, you know, now to see him finally 
you know, break through uh, so much heartbreak over the years with with injuries or, you know, maybe losing to these double digit seeds on kind of these crazy one off games where we're dominating non conference teams throughout the rest of the year, but then in the tournament having some bad luck. So, uh, you know, he finally is getting validated. I, I would think we all, you know, knew how good of a coach he was and yeah. he didn't need to do that in our eyes, but just nationally to see him get that validation is incredible. Uh, Chris, it always helps when you have some really good players on your team. I think Zach Eady would certainly fit that bill. The school's all-time leading scorer, all-time leading rebounder. Um, we don't have enough time in this segment to talk about all of the accolades that he has checked off the list this season and continues to be checking off as we go along here. Uh, but it is worth noting that uh, he did this week, earlier in the week, receive another Player of the Year honor. Yeah, he was the uh, NABC uh, National Player of the Year, which is the National Association of Basketball Coaches. It's the second one he's won this year. Uh, he won the Sporting News back in mid-March or so. So uh, there's about three more, I believe, coming out this weekend. Presumptively, he's the winner. We're not totally sure yet, but hard to believe it'd be anyone else. And um, you know, just the impact that he's made on this program from day one to now is is remarkable. Um, just how far he's come, and uh, you know, I'm I'm I think he's probably the most happy that he's going to play in a Final Four. Mm -hmm. Like these awards probably don't mean a whole lot to him right now, but uh, maybe down the road they will. But him getting to a Final Four and and reaching that dream, this is the reason he came back this right. year. He right. said that all summer, all off season. Um, he said that after the uh, Utah State game, we d I didn't come back to go to a Sweet 16. I came back to go to a Final Four, so and to win a national championship. So uh, he's four, he's two games away from doing that. And um, in my opinion, he cemented his legacy as one of the greatest players in college basketball history. Would be hard to argue that. Think about this: uh, 25 points a game. Zach Eady leads the nation in scoring. That means he's the first player to lead the nation in scoring and lead his team to the Final Four in the same season since Oscar Robertson. So let's just start right there. Last guy to do that, the big O. And there have been other uh, boxes that he has checked here in the last couple of weeks, uh, really last week, uh, as far as tournament um, superlatives. Uh, Larry Bird, can yeah. you help me here on the numbers? So he, he scored over 900 points, 450 rebounds. He's the first since Larry Bird to do that. And when you start going back and you do all these stats and nuggets, and you're, you're going back to Elvin Hayes, mm. Wilt Chamberlain, Larry Bird, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Right. Like it's, it's unheard of the production that he's putting up in the last 40 years. And it's, I mean, it's, it's just amazing. And you know, you see everything on social media about he's tall, he's just tall, he's unskilled, he just gets fouled, he shoots free throws. He, he's about to break the NCAA record for free throws in a season, wow. which has been held since 1954. <laughs> but you know he, he he draws fouls and he's just right. he's impossible to guard and it's just uh, you know it's just again I go back to day one when he got here and it's just incredible to see the development that he's had. Uh, you said we should presume, although we don't know yet, but it's probably fair to presume he is going to sweep all of the National Player of the Year awards. Which if he does so, back to back unanimous Player of the Year for every group that uh, that honors that particular award since Bill Walton. Yeah, yep. Ralph Sampson is technically a back-to-back -back National Player of the Year, but he did not sweep them all right. in the two years or three years that he did it. So the only player to sweep them, uh, all of the awards in back-to-back -back years was Bill Walton. Unbelievable. Yep. Uh, so Bob, think about this. All the years you've been associated with Purdue basketball uh, has a player, uh, broadcaster, student coach at one point. I mean, you've seen some good ones, man, uh, whether it's Jaden Ivey or Etwan Moore or Biggie Swanigan or you name them. Zach has to rank at the top, doesn't he? He certainly does. He, he's the top of, of the charts there. You know, just getting a chance to sit courtside, you know, these last four years and watch him play has been such a treat. I mean, to think, you know, we had Jaden Ivey and his speed and just like how fascinating that was to see up close. But then now to see Zach and just his sheer dominance up close. Uh, you know, he just enforces his will against the opponent every time. And, you know, like Chris was talking about with the fouls and stuff, like, well, maybe teams should stop putting six, eight guys on Zach E. Like, if you want to stop fouling him, like, recruit somebody who's bigger and stronger and taller, right? Like, it's not Zach's fault that he has those dominant physical characteristics and uh, he uses them really well. He's got an unbelievable motor, brings it every game. Um, and, and Purdue is relentless with getting the ball to him. You know, we don't mm -hmm. allow the other team to get a couple possessions off. Like you saw late in that Tennessee game when it was tight, we were throwing that thing to Zach every time. And that's what Coach Painter and this staff have done. They've built 
a great team around Zach Eady with the skill and the shooting. You know, we're the number one, number two, three-point shooting team in the country this year for uh, the majority of the season. And we make a team, the other team pick their poison, right? And if Tennessee wants to stay one-on-one, -on -one, then Zach is going to get in his bag and um, score at will or draw fouls. And, and that's obviously what happened a lot late in that game. You know, I'll say this too. Zach Eady was at IMG Academy for two years. And there are hundreds of coaches that go in to mm -hmm. IMG Academy every year. They didn't recruit him. That's right. You know, so like. They had their chance. You, you had your, and Zach has said as much. He goes, you know, Rick Barnes from Tennessee was in every week watching guys down there. He goes, he looked over me. Mm. And, you know, so they had their chance. Right. Uh, so Bob was being a little dishonest with you, uh, folks, just a little bit ago. He probably didn't realize it. He said, we watched Zach courtside for four years. <laughs> Technically, his freshman year, That's we weren't true. courtside. That, of course, was the COVID season. I'm only bringing this up because the first time that Bob and I had a chance to see Zach compete was his first ever game. It was down in Florida. Uh, they, I think they called it the Space Coast Space Classic. Coast, yep. uh, and back then, because of COVID, the broadcast team was not allowed to travel with the team. So we watched the game uh, from a small room in Ross Age Stadium calling the broadcast off of television monitors. I'm giving you this backstory because Zach Eady scored in double figures in that game. His first ever game as a freshman uh, at Purdue. And Bob and I, had, I think you remember this, we walked out of the building that night after the broadcast was over, and we were saying to ourselves, hey, I think this Zach Eady, my guy, he might turn out to be okay. I think so, and probably a better question is, who was more nervous that day, Zach Eady for his, for his first college basketball game, or me for my first ever radio broadcast, because I was freaking out, panicking the entire day. I tried to cover it up best I could, but yeah, th there was a play in that game where Zach jumped for a pass, came down, and all in one motion went back up and finished, and for a guy his size to do that as a freshman, I, me and Rob kind of looked at each other and thought, this guy's got a chance to be special. You, you know, we did not, of course, think he would be this special, breaking records left and right, but uh, yeah, he showed something that very first day where uh, obviously it, it proved that Coach Painter has an eye for talent and, and he saw some of that uh, potential as well. You know, I, re I remember watching that game and I'm sitting there thinking, like his first basket was a dunk. And it, it was just, I mean, it was honestly because he was just taller than everyone. Because mm -hmm. um, he wasn't a great athlete. You know, at that time his body wasn't developed right. yet and everything. And But just the work he's put in the last four years to get his body right. right. Like his conditioning is, yes. no one talks enough about his conditioning. Right. I mean, he, he could have played 40 minutes against Tennessee, hey, no guys, problem. You guys remember this? Going into his junior season, everyone was saying nationally, well, he only played 19 right. minutes a game last year. He probably won't be in good enough shape to play multiple minutes. Yeah. What? Yeah. I mean, he's, he could play. He very easily could have played 40 minutes against Tennessee, against who you know, in the Big Ten tournament, 45 against Wisconsin if he mm. needed to. So, um, his conditioning is, I think, what actually sets him apart. Yeah. from other big men uh, that have played this game. Well, the big reason Purdue has won more games than ever when they've ever won in school history. The reason, one of the big reasons they're back in the Final Four for the first time since 1980 is Zach Eady. But here in the final, uh, final closing couple of minutes, uh, look, there is a huge supporting cast of characters that has made Purdue an elite ball club, uh, whether it be the transfer Lance Jones, who had the huge hit to the three from the right wing late in the game against Tennessee, Braden Smith bursting onto the scene, an All-American honorable mention this year, first team All-Big Ten, Fletcher Lawyer shooting lights out in the month of March, Trey Kaufman Wren carrying the team against Utah State uh, in the second half. Uh, and yeah, we can go on and on. Mason Gillis off the bench, Ethan Morton. I mean, I, I'm, I, now I'm fearful I'm going to leave someone out. My point being, it hasn't just been Zach Eady. It hasn't. It's been just the, the whole team, everybody knowing their role, buying in uh, to the collective. And it's been fascinating to watch. You know, so many of these guys that had to deal with, you know, the pain and suffering of losing to the 16th seed last year, they all work on their game. They all are devoted to becoming better players. and they've all done that pretty much like it's been incredibly Mason Gillis six man of the year and you said those two sophomore guards but what's the stats with the sophomore guards uh as far as since they've been here they've basically well they've only lost what 10 games, 10 games. 62 and 10 62 and 10 in the starting lineup both of them both of them in the starting lineup 62 and 10 they've won two Big Ten regular season championships a Big Ten tournament championship now a Midwest regional championship two pre-conference tournament championships, you know, Maui Invitational and, and Portland. So, I mean, they're just winners, right? Like they're flat out winners. Uh, Zach Eady said that in a, a matter of fact way after the game, uh, talking about his team, like these guys are winners and they finally validated on the biggest stage. Now, I'll say this about Braden and Fletcher. So Coach Painter couldn't recruit them normally the right. way he normally right. would because sure. of COVID. 
couldn't watch games, so all he had to go on was film. Mm. And he had to be kind of convinced to recruit Braden Smith. Um, no one else did. Right. And people reached out to him. He finally watched film, offered him a scholarship. Uh, three days later, Braden took it. <laughs> and Painter says the first day he saw, was able to see them live in AAU, they, Braden and Fletcher played against each other maybe, and he left at halftime and called the coaches and said, guys, we can win a national championship wow. with these two. Wow. And these are these two under-recruited kids that, you know, no, you look at them and you're like, these guys wow. are these guys are killers Not like the this, most physically you know? imposing so like, backcourt um sure. and they're just they just have this aura and swag and confidence about them that you know you just don't see every day uh and in closing speaking of swag our two freshmen haven't been too scared either fearless would be a good word for both camden heidi and miles colvin the way they have played in the ncaa tournament uh for bobby riddell and for chris foreman we invite you to stay close we're going to take a very short break when we come back our special guest here on the show will be assistant coach brandon brantley we'll get his thoughts about not only being an assistant coach through this run but also him as a player for coach katie uh having an opportunity to uh, bring a final four for coach katie uh, to his doorstep as well so that's coming up stay with us here on our special boiler ball pregame show today from phoenix Welcome back everyone here to our Boiler Ball show, a special edition here on this Wednesday from Phoenix, Arizona, downtown Phoenix. We're so glad you have chosen to spend some time with us today. As I mentioned, going to our last break, uh, we are now pleased to be joined by assistant coach Brandon Brantley, as he's going to give us a few minutes to, uh, to talk about this, uh, what has been a very memorable season to this point for Purdue basketball and certainly a memorable NCAA tournament run. Uh, for the record, we're not going to talk about NC State just yet. It's only Wednesday. Uh, we'll talk about NC State later on in the week when we preview the opponent. But with that said, Coach Brantley, congratulations. Uh, you've, you've been through the wars with Coach Painter for not all 19 of these seasons, but almost all 19 of them. Congratulations to get to the Final Four. What, does, uh, what was that feeling like on Sunday uh, late afternoon when you knew that this ball club was headed to the Final Four. Well, let me say congratulations to you as well. well thank you, but because you've been here mm. uh, the whole time with us the whole time. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, all night. You know, it's you know we all play a different role, but um, um, everybody's contributed um, to the success of, of this team and this program. Thank so, you. So thank you, but yeah. um, I don't know. It was. You know, every year that's the goal. I think every every right. every team in the country's goal is to reach the Final Four, and it's easier said than done. And um, when that horn finally sounded, oh. um, the best thing for me was like seeing the joy on on our players' faces, right? Um, because I know like the work um, that those guys have put in, um, but also just from last season, everything that the guys had to deal with, right. and, and they set out um, to accomplish this goal, and they did it. So that was, that was probably the best part for me. So I'll share with our fans, and I hope you're okay with me sharing this. Uh, you and I had a, had a, a pretty emotional moment in the coach's locker room after, after the fact because what you were alluding to, uh, we were talking about that feeling of being on that bus and going home from Columbus last year after losing in that game against the, the 16-seeded Fairleigh Dickinson Ball Club. Uh, and to go from that uh, feeling uh, lower than any probably you could possibly feel in a in, in your basketball career to now going to the final four I mean that from a talk about an emotional wave uh, that we were certainly on one for the last uh, few months here oh man it was just to I, I'll, I'll kind of give a little bit to the fans but you know we lost that game and um, you just remember sitting in that locker room and it was it was oh. silence man and oh. you could you could hear some stuff going on in on the player side but oh. Um, just coming back to the hotel and I remember walking through the lobby and yeah. you know our fans that <clears throat> um, that greeted us at the hotel and just to comfort us with words and hugs or whatever and you know you can see it on their faces and yeah I remember going up to my room and um, I said man I, I know I'm not getting on social media I'm not doing that <laughs> no, and, no. and just riding home in silence the next day and um, I, rem I remember walking into the weight room uh, Monday morning because um, it's, it's procedure 
after the season, you know, you give those guys a couple weeks off. Sure. And I go down into the weight room and um, just to kind of stick my head in and, and Cabo, who's our strength coach, he said, Coach, everybody on the team showed up to this morning and got a workout in. Wow. And I just remember thinking to myself, I said, man, we're going to be okay. We got yeah. the right guys on this team in this locker room. Um, and, and those guys showed up every single day in the off season um, and taught me a valuable lesson because I, I, you know, I wanted to run and stick my head in the sand and I was, yeah, I was feeling down. <laughs> uh -huh. And I said, well, you know, the guys that actually put the uniform on and went out there um, and those guys showed up and, and held their heads up. Um, and then for us to be here, um, uh -huh. and it's, it's tremendous. Well, Coach, I mean, when thinking about, you know, that game against Tennessee, it's, it's back and forth the whole way. Uh, you know, we, we build a little bit of a, we, or you have a deficit there in the first half, down by 11, end up being able to come uh, and make a big run there to end the half. How huge was that run there to end the half just to be able to, like, not only make up the deficit, but then, you know, build that lead? Yeah, sometimes in the tournament, <clears throat> you know, you, it's basketball. There are going to be times where you play well, times where you don't. You find yourself in a hole. Um, but just knowing these guys, I wasn't concerned about the deficit. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes in tournament play, you get down 11, and it could be a death sentence. Mm -hmm. But being around these guys, I said, hey, we just we just got to settle down, kind of clean some things up, and get back to being us. And that's exactly um, what we did. Uh, I would like to ask about the performance we saw in that game against Tennessee from Zach Eady. Now, this is a guy you obviously have been working with individually because you coach our big men, as most of our fans know, since the day he stepped on campus. But in a game when you absolutely had to have it, 40 points and 16 rebounds, that performance alone uh, will go down in the annals of Purdue basketball history of one of the greatest, if not the greatest performance ever in a postseason game. Uh, Zach, Zach is Zach. You know, he's <laughs> he's been um, – really focused um, this season. You know, he, he felt the sting of that loss um, last March in, in the tournament, um, and he's turned it up. I mean, everybody in that locker room has kind of turned it up in their own way, but, you know, he's that, he, he's the one guy that's, he can unbutton that shirt and you see the S on his chest. <laughs> mm, right. um, and right. he showed up um, at the right time. He, mm -hmm. You know, he, you know he, he has a sense of like when he, he knows he had to step up like really big, and that's exactly what he did. And, of course, I didn't even mention the biggest play of the game he made was on the defensive end, the, the block of Dalton Connect. What does it say about our team as far as, you know, from a defensive standpoint, we, have, we didn't allow 70 points or more in any of the four games so far in the NCAA tournament. We've, of course, been a very good defensive team all year, but uh, it's nice that we've taken it to another level. And in that Tennessee game, we have the worst three-point shooting percentage game we've had all season long, just 20%. What does that say about our team to be able to win that game in another fashion? You'll hear, you'll, you'll hear Coach Painter um, talk to our guys about um, there are going to be some nights when the ball doesn't go in, um, but we still got to do our job. And um, um, that performance on Sunday kind of exemplified um, what he's talked about all season long. You know, guys feel better, they play better when that ball goes in. Um, and sometimes young guys, when, when they don't see that ball go in, they can stop doing their jobs. Yeah. Um, but we got a mature bunch in that locker room. Um, and we've had games like this before where, where the ball didn't go in, but you know, we still got to rebound, we still got to defend, and we got we to gotta be together um, on that bench doing tough runs. All right, so final thought here with Coach Brandon Brantley. And again, a quick reminder here. Uh, I told you this early in the show, but I'll continue to <laughs> remind you uh, we'll be doing one of these shows uh, throughout the week each and every day here in Phoenix uh, so please just pay uh, close attention to the different uh, Purdue athletics and uh, boiler ball social media outlets uh, so you can uh, find out when your next opportunity is to watch uh, tomorrow's show uh, Thursday but uh, let's wind up Thursday's show with this coach Brantley coach Katie your coach coach painters coach uh, he's been here for this entire NCAA run of course uh, given a piece of the net and a t-shirt and a commemorative uh, baseball cap celebrating that uh, final four uh, when that game went final on uh, Sunday against Tennessee. Just your thoughts on being able to give back to the guy that gave you so much. Um, it's always special <clears throat> because everybody, you know, we, everybody dreamed of making it to a final four, yep. you know, any, uh, and I, and, Every former player that's reached out to me and congratulated me and, and Coach Painter and the program, 
you know, I said that, man, this is for all of us. Yeah. Everybody that's ever worn this jersey because that was that was our number one goal was to get to the Final Four right. and to win a national championship. And um, just growing up as a kid, you know, watching, becoming a fan of college basketball. And, um, you know, I, I, I wanted to be Glenn Rice when, when, <laughs> when Michigan won it. And sure. In 1990, I, was, I wanted to be Larry Johnson, mm -hmm. you know. So um, a lot of feelings came out of me, you know, took me back to my, my, my youth, mm. um, watching Final Fours and now to like finally be here, but to have like Coach Katie because I know he poured so much into the mm. program, he tried to help us. Uh, so for him to be along on this ride and to see it is, is extremely special. Well, thank you, Coach Brantley, for a few minutes today. I know we're just getting started here on a Wednesday. Still uh, feels like a, a long time to wait until Saturday night, but uh, we do appreciate you giving us some time and uh, uh, good luck on Saturday. Yeah, thank you, Thanks, guys. Coach. Thank you. All right. Hey, thanks everyone for joining us for today's edition of our special Boiler Ball show. We will be back again tomorrow to talk some more Purdue basketball as we get you closer and closer to that tip off Saturday night, 609 Eastern, when Purdue takes on North Carolina State in a Final Four matchup, a national semifinal game uh, in Glendale, Arizona. Uh, with that, uh, for Chris Foreman and for Bobby Riddell and for Coach Brandon Brantley, I'm Rob Blackman. Thanking you so much for joining us. We appreciate Corey Palm doing all the heavy lifting behind the scenes. Corey. And, <laughs> and with that, have a great rest of your day. We'll talk again tomorrow. <laughs>